tonight. If I could invite you to stand together, we're going to sing one day. Jesus is coming. Let's sing it all together. Oh, one day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away, rising he justified. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected, bearing our sins, my Redeemer is He. Living He died, He saved me, bearing our sin, my sins far away, rising He justified. song this evening. <clears throat> Pastor Stensis isn't feeling well this uh, tonight, and so uh, we're going to have Brother Stensis Sr. preaching, and uh, certainly good to see everyone tonight. Let's go ahead and pray as we gather uh, tonight. Father, we're thankful for just the opportunity to come once again and gather and sing songs that are such an encouragement and remind us of your truth, uh, the truth of the gospel, and the hope we have in Christ. We're thankful for uh, uh, the time tonight, we pray that you'd speak to our hearts, hearts through the music and through the message, and Brother Stensis as well. We pray that you'd be with Pastor and those who may not be feeling well tonight as well. We ask it all in Christ's name. Amen. Let's sing together, Still Sweeter Every Day. All together. To Jesus every day I find my heart is closer drawn. He's fairer than the glory of the golden purple dawn. He's all my fancy pictures in its fairest dreams and more. Each day he grows still sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancy this side the golden shore. Oh, there he'll be still sweeter than he ever Good job on that. His glory broke upon me when I saw him from afar. He's fairer than the lily, brighter than the morning star. He fills and satisfies. 
satisfies my longing spirit o'er and o'er. Each day he grows still sweeter than he was the day before. The half cannot be fancy. This side, the golden shore. Oh, there he'll be still sweeter than he ever was before. My heart is sometimes heavy, but he comes with sweet relief. He pulls me to his bosom when I drop with blighting grief. seated uh, tonight. Just a few announcements to keep in mind after the service tonight in preparation for junior camp coming up in June. There's going to be a meeting with all the parents of the children going to junior camp um, with the Oilers. So that'll be here in the auditorium. If you could stick around to be a part of that, that'd be, uh, that'd be great. A couple things going on this week. The teen activity uh, on Saturday is the 412 rally, so I think the teenagers are, are out tonight, but uh, that will, they'll be leaving from the church here <clears throat> at 845, and then they'll be headed off and get back sometime, I believe, in the afternoon around 3 p.m. or so. So the teens will be leaving this Saturday. The men's prayer breakfast is coming up in a couple of weeks, May the 22nd, and uh, all men are invited to be a part of that at 9 o'clock in the fellowship hall. And then the Wiser Society will be meeting at the same time as the Young Adults Activity. The Wiser Society is meeting at the Oilers House on one side of the lake. The Young Adults are meeting on the other side of the lake, so we'll see which side of the lake gets louder uh, from, from it all. <clears throat> Oilers starts early at 4 p.m. Young Adults Activity is at 5 p.m. Uh, at the Conleys for the Young Adults Activity. There's going to be dinner at both places, and so hopefully all the Young Adults can come to one side at the Wiser Society, the the wise ones can be on the other side. The graduation service will be on Sunday evening, May the 23rd, uh, coming up here in May. And there's four graduates that uh, you might want to keep in mind that are graduating. We'll be celebrating with them. Um, two more events in uh, May, the Citywide Blitz on May the 29th. We're going to be having uh, things prepared to be able to put on different doors throughout Eaton and see if we can cover a chunk of the city. And so if you can plan to be a part of that, that's just for two hours on May the 29th from 10 a.m. to noon. And then a church picnic as well. I'm sure there'll be some more information coming uh, about that right at the end of May, May the 31st. We can have the ushers come for the offering this evening. And let's go ahead and pray for the offering. Father, we are thankful once again to be able to gather. We pray that you bless uh, the teens as they prepare uh, tonight, as they have their lessons and time in your word together, but as they travel again uh, just to be with other teenagers, that you continue to work in their hearts. We're thankful for them and for the other activities coming up. We do pray that you be with Pastor, give him strength, that he didn't make a quick recovery. Bless the offering and the giving. We ask it in Christ's name. Amen. And once again, we'll sing together, I must tell Jesus. Jesus can help us, Jesus alone, all together. I must tell Jesus all of my 
trials I cannot bear these burdens alone in my distress he kindly will help me he ever loves and cares for his own I must love Jesus I must tell Jesus I cannot bear We're going to preach first tonight. All right. Good to be back with you. Thank you for all your prayers for us. And God blessed. We had a great time. Good ladies meeting with my wife preaching. And uh, it's legal. No, no men was there. <laughs> but, uh, and she can preach too. But. We just we had a great time. I was able to preach Sunday morning, Sunday school, Sunday morning, Sunday night, and and seen one saved. And boy, what a what a blessing it was to see some of our folks. I'm not a New York City man. I figured that out real fast. I got out this morning. I walked out of my my front door, and I just kind of walked out there and stood in the yard don't have them I mean what brother Dana he kind of helps support himself a little bit and he mows lawns and he said you want to uh, you want to go with me you can just sit and try I said I'll go and I'll, I'll help mow, mow the lawn that's okay <laughs> ain't no lawn all you need is a weed eater or a pair of shears that's all <laughs> I'm telling you. And they get money for that. They're a bunch of lazy people there in New York City. Huh? But we had a great time. Had a, had a lot of fun. And uh, Dana was one of my deacons in Sedalia, Missouri when I was pastoring there. Surrendered to the mission field and went to 
yeah, there to uh, New York City and down in the Queens area. That's a interesting place and kind of rough. And he said, well, we're all right on these two blocks, but don't go two blocks down. Uh, he, you know, I mean, it. I'd have just went wherever. It, I wouldn't have known, but he knows that place, and I'm glad he does because I didn't. But when I, while I was down there at Times Square, we was about two blocks from actual, the actual Times Square, driving along, coming back down there. Well, that found out, same time we was over there about two blocks, they had about four people shot. Uh, they had a bunch of tourists got in the way of some kids or gangs or whatever it was and got four of them uh, shot. And then next thing I know, uh, Israel's getting rockets attacked and all kinds of, what, I got it on. I do, I do, right there, it's green. <laughs> I'll just talk real loud, amen? It helps the live stream? Okay. Well, tonight they're dead stream. You know, sometimes the river dries up. But we're, we, we had a real great, great time. And, and uh, pray for Brother Dice. I'm telling you what a ministry they've got there. And uh, the folks they're ministering to and... Uh, they, the whole family, they get right out there, and, and, and I mean, it's just second nature to them. I can understand that. That's the way it was with us over in Africa, but uh, he really has quite a tough ministry there. You know, man met, was meeting with God, and he asked him a question. He said, God, he said, what, what's a million years to you? And God said, hold oh, about a second. The guy thought a little bit and he said, God? He said, what's a million or what's, what's $10 million to you? God said, hold oh, about a dime. The guy said, God, can I borrow a dime? <laughs> God said, just a second. I figured if Joel can do these things, I can do them too. Amen. <laughs> Turn your Bibles to the book of Isaiah, chapter 41. Do be praying for pastor. He's dizzy. Of course, we knew that already, but uh, I love you, man. But no, it's, uh, there's different flus and stuff going around, not, not the normal COVID stuff. Actually, people can get sick without it being COVID. And, uh, but do pray for him. He's just feeling a little under the weather, and he'll be right back. Well, God really spoke to my heart about this. I mean, I, I'm thinking, you know, people shooting out there in, in, in New York City and up in Chicago every day, and, and now Hamas has attacked over 1,500 rockets, I think, now, and they believe it's going to be full war. And uh, which it's about time, let's get it straightened out. But it's been going on for a thousand years, so it's not going not gonna to end uh, anytime soon. And then the COVID and all the different things. And, uh, and I was thinking of my brother here. He got good news the other day. They said that the, the leukemia is in remission. I mean, it's got done. Boy, I tell you, that's good news. But early on, when they looked across that desk and said, you got leukemia, that was a different story. Uh, this verse, I think, and I hope, I pray, that this verse will, or a couple verses, will really be a, a, a real blessing an encouragement to you. I mean, you look out here and it just seems like there's no hope any way you turn. I mean, just the, America and the world and everything just falling apart. And people really are, are desperate. All the lockdown, the suicide rates and stuff are just skyrocketing, even with young people and stuff. 
And, and that's why I was going to preach a different message till pastor said that the young people are going to be in here because I think you need this just as much as the older folks. We need hope. We really do. Why does somebody go out and blow their brains out? No hope. They have, they have just totally lost hope. They, they just give up. And I'm not talking about just lost people. I mean Christians as well. Uh, you know, in, in, in our, our homes, we, we get to a point and we just give up. We quit. We, it just, there's no hope. And we can't see our way through. And I, and, I, and I think we forget some vitally important truths. And that's what I want to focus a little bit on tonight. Isaiah chapter 41 if you'll re look with me and we'll read just a few of these verses. First of all in verse number 10. We'll begin with verse number 10. Fear thou not. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed. For I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them, even them that, uh, that uh, contended with thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing and as a thing of naught. Why? He says, for I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee. Father, help us tonight. Lord, help us to get a hold of these scriptures and Lord, so many don't have hope. And many times, even in the Christian life, things get hard. And problems are real and fears are real. And, and Lord, we just need to know where our hope lies and that we can trust in Thee. Lord, help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Look at that again, verse 10. He says, fear thou not. You know, when Jesus appears to people in the, in the scriptures. He always says, fear not. Fear not. Comes to Peter. Peter, fear not. Comes to the disciples. Fear not. God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love, of a sound mind. Boy, in New York City, certain. Anyway, he says, fear thou not. Why? The word for here. He gives us the reason why we should not fear. He says, for I, Jehovah God, am with thee. When I went to, to Uganda, I mean, I was scared of my shadow. You say, you missionaries have been a great faith. No, no, we're people just like you. I grew up, I was scared of everything. I was, I was just a shrimp. I was 143 pounds until I got married. <laughs> the rest is history. I was always the misfit. I, I was the one they rolled in the sticker patch at recess. And you know what I'm talking about. I always wanted, I tried so hard trying to fit in. That's why I become a drunk. I was trying to fit in. That's why I started smoking. I was trying to be accepted. I wanted to fit in. I want to be like everybody else. But I never felt that I could. I always tried a little bit harder because I never felt like I could please my father. That's why over and over I tell my kids, I tell my grandkids, I want you to know something. I'm proud of you because I am. But I want them to hear it. I never did. And so consequently, I was pretty 
scared of life and everything. I just couldn't measure up. When God called me to Africa, that wasn't a, yes, let's go. That was a, okay, let's go. But boy, I'm just not into this thing. <laughs> I was scared to death. When he gives the Great Commission, and he tells us to go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And then he says it. Lo, I am with thee always. God made that real in my life. I'm not afraid to go out to these villages and stuff. I don't care if they see a white man or not. Because God, Jehovah God, the God that created the heavens and the earth, the God that keeps our hearts working, the God that, that does all these things, God says, I am with you always. That means he's going to go to Uganda with. And he did. That way when they look over that desk and say, you got leukemia, you got cancer, you got a brain tumor, you're broke, whatever it is. You can face it. You have hope, why? Because he says, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Jehovah God is there. He says, be not dismayed. Don't be scared, discouraged. Don't be down in the mouth and, and just, oh, goodness, I don't know what's going to happen. I, what, what's going to go on here? How am I going to do this? Well, how's this going to work out? You're not going to know how it works out until it works out. So don't worry about it. He says, be not dismayed. Why? He says, for. That little word for is a powerful word. He tells us why. He says, for I am thy God. Young people, listen to me. Listen to me carefully. It's not mom and daddy's God. He's got to be your God. You go and you ask God for things in prayer. You get in that book and you search for God. That's why a lot of young people, they get 18 or whatever, and they think, okay, now I'm out of the house, or, and they just leave church and everything. You know why they leave church? Because it was only mom and daddy's God. It was the preacher's God. It was the, the Christian school teacher's God. But it wasn't the kids' God. Now you've got some godly parents, and I thank God for them. But He has to be your God. Because when you go off and get a job, or when you get in college, or things like this, and, and finances and, and all of it start rolling in, and I mean the problems, and they're going to be problems. You can't run to mama, you can't run to daddy. Now you're a man or a young lady. Now you're going to have to go to God. And many, many people, they, they kind of grew up and, and, and got saved maybe when they were, were maybe 20 or something like this. Like me, I was 20 and 26. I, I didn't know enough coming out of the rain. But when I found out that he was my God, I didn't care who else was in the room. I didn't care who else knew what. The fact is, I needed him. I needed Jesus. And that day, September 21st, 1975, Jesus became my God. Not just somebody's God. Not just the God we go to worship in church. Jesus became my God. 
He's the one that calls the shots. He's the one that, that takes care of us. I don't know, probably every day of my life, I think, I, I tell my wife, can you imagine how good God's been to us? And we just start going down the line. Our kids serving God, serving God, preaching the Word of God, doing this. I'm, I, I'm just, He has provided for us. He has taken care of us. He is, he's, he's kept us in, 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 in wonderful health as far as I'm concerned. I mean, yeah, well, there's things we can't do, but that don't, that's not a problem. He's given us a great church. He's given me a wonderful pastor. Even dads need pastors. Don't get a big head, son. <laughs> I listen to him. I learn from him all the time. But he's my God. It didn't make any difference whether, what Governor DeWine says. It didn't make any difference what Biden or Trump or, or, or any of them says. What does my God say? That's all that counts. Now, if what they say coincides with what my God says, then, then I'm with him. And, and we're on the same page. If not, I'm serving him. And that alone. Notice he says, not only am I thy God, but he says, I will strengthen you. He said, I'll strengthen thee. When we start having problems, usually it's because we're trying to do things in our own strength, in our own power. I've found through the years, and, and, and we've worked completely alone out out in the boonies by ourselves. We are the only, only white folks around. And I've learned to work by myself, but I've also found that I can't do it. I can't do it. I, I can do certain things and I can work around, but every time I try to manipulate, it goes south. And I end up messing up or, or the project falls apart or whatever is going, when you realize that he is your strength, look, there's nothing. These kids learn this song, and we sing it, and we kind of laugh as adults, but we need to learn that song. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing that my God cannot do. Nothing. God said, start a radio station. I didn't know enough to hardly turn it on and turn it off to find a station. And yet we built three radio stations preaching the gospel. And now other missionaries have caught it. And we're basically covering the entire country. It's unheard of. Of the country of Uganda with Christian radio. Listen, that's not me. That's God. He's the one that made it all come to pass. He's the one that brought people in contact. He's the one that figured all this stuff out. He says, I will strengthen thee. It don't make any difference if it's finances, if it's, if it's uh, health or whatever. You and I need him. We, we laugh and we cut up and we have a good time and everything, you know. And, but when bottom line comes down, we need God every day, every day, every day. I think when God gave me this, this neuropathy and stuff, it really, really set me down <laughs> physically and uh, spiritually. I found out that some, just a little thing, and God can shut your water off. Just a little thing. And if I'm going to accomplish anything, 
It has to be God's strength. Where do you get God's strength from? When do you go to him and ask him for that strength? Or do we react afterwards? Some bad happens and then we start seeking for that strength. No, we should have had that strength before we walked in the doctor's office. We should have had strength before the accident happened. We should have had strength when we're investing. We're, we should have had strength before we had children to raise them. Because when it comes, it, it's almost overwhelming. And that's why we have to be prepared and understand that he is our strength. He said, I will... <laughs> Help thee. Anybody need any help? <laughs> I, I always tell the preacher, I, you know, if you need any help, I holler. Of course, he tells me the same thing, and I'm as bullheaded as he is. Or he's a, anyway. Fact is, we need help. We need help. That's why I, I, I don't understand people that, that, don't get in the Word of God every day. I mean every day. I did a survey when I was pastoring in Missouri, a congregation like this, and I did a survey and I, and I give everybody a piece of paper, blank piece of paper, and I said, I want you to write down two, two things, two numbers, that's it, okay? I don't want your name, nothing. I just want, and I want you to be honest. How much time have you spent this week in the Word of God? Write that on the top. Then how much time have you spent this week, the whole week, in prayer? After I took them up and everything and I, I figured them all, you know, averaged them all and everything for the and I come back that evening. What would you guess? A congregation just like this. How much time do you think, and that's, that's including my time, my study time, my devotion time, all of that, my wife's and all this. Total, averaged out. How much time do you think the average in our church spent in the word of God in the entire week? Three minutes. I almost had a heart attack. I've had other pastors do the same. And they come up with pretty much the same thing. Now listen to me. We all look good on the outside. But we, we think we got it by the tail. The average Christian, the average Christian very seldom reads their Bible. They dust it off and they bring it to church, make them look spiritual. The average Christian don't spend five minutes a week in prayer. He said, you, ask, you have not because you ask not. 90, I think the figure was 94% of the Christian people in America have never given the gospel one time. Those that have led somebody to Christ is less than that. I don't remember the, the stat on it. But you can imagine what it is. You've got about 2% of the Christian population doing 98% of the work. Why? 
I don't think people understand how much they, they need help. I don't think they, need, they understand how, how much or how important it is to get the strength of God and to really obey what God says. I didn't command everybody to go into all the world. God did. Your God, if he is. Or are we just playing games? And we're just involved in religion. He says, I Jehovah God will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. You know what's going to keep you going? It's that right hand of God's righteousness doing right. You have a young, young, young boy or young girl, and, and they might be three, four, five years old, and you're going to cross the street in New York City. You're on the street corner. What are you going to do, Mom, Dad? What are you going to do? Huh? You're going to grab their hand. You're not going to let them grab your hand. You're going to grab their hand. Because he can let go or she can let go. And just in a heartbeat, they've taken off or something. But when you got a hold of them, it's a different story. They're not going nowhere. God says, I have got a hold of you with my right hand. And he said, that right hand is my righteousness. God will lead you across that street in righteousness. God never leads somebody to go against the word of God. Why? He wrote it. He didn't tell you one thing here and then tell you one thing different someplace else. That's the charismatic movement. They'll, they'll say, God led me to do this. The Spirit led me to do this. But it's totally contrary to the book. God won't do that. Why? Because He's got a hold of you and He is leading you. You're not going over there. You're going over here where He's taken you and He takes you in righteousness. God's never going to lead you to go to the bar and drink. Why? Every time, all the way through the scripture, he condemns it. Condemns it. It's associated with homosexuality. It's associated with bestiality. It's associated with murder. It's associated with corruption. Every time, every, every time you see it, it's associated in the wrong way. So is God, if he's got a hold of you and he is leading you with his hand of righteousness, is he going to lead you that way? If he condemns homosexuality and all this other perverted stuff that's going on, is he going to lead you in that way? Or is he going to lead you in the way that says to twain? Husband and wife, man and woman. He's not going to lead that way. You know, we wonder who's leading in, in a lot of the politics and stuff like this. Well, just figure it out. God's leading, in, leading you in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He's not going to take you over in the South 40. So if you want to know what God's will is, you want to know where God's leading you? Just understand he's got a hold of your right hand. And he's not letting go. I like that. That's security. Amen. <laughs> security of the believer. And he's going to take you in the path of righteousness. If you have a question, just ask yourself, does the Bible say this is righteous or unrighteous? And you can tell whether it's God's leading you or whether it's your flesh or the, or the devil. Let him lead you. He's going to lead you with the right hand that he said of my righteousness. In verse 13, he says, For I, the Lord, Jehovah God, 
thy God will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, fear not, I will help thee, I will help thee. Now, none of that was my message, that was just the verse. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. See where he's leading you? Where's your hope? You can have hope when you're doing right. You can have hope when you're, you're living right. If you're not living right, your hope dissipates. It goes away. You get discouraged. You get despaired. But my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. Boy, I like that song. Hope looks to the future. What's it look like? What's hope really look like? Hope looks to the future. It's rooted in the reality of God's promises, his goodness, his mercy, his grace that he promises and has, he's already extended it to us. It's right before us. I, I thought about different qualities and we're not going to get to hardly any of this that, that, that I'd like to tonight, but he talks about fear. Fear is real. Don't be shocked when all of a sudden you're overcome with fear. When, when, they, when you get that, that bad information, I mean in your heart, it, it, there'll be just a knot in your gut. When, they, when, they, when I saw that piece of paper said I was going to prison for 20 years, I'm telling you, I can't explain the feeling that I had. I mean a knot in my gut, my heart was just pounding a thousand miles an hour, my brain just like mush. I, God, what's going on? Fear's real. Difficulties are real. But that's why we have to have faith. It's impossible to please God without faith. Lost people can't have faith. They, you know, they said, well, I, I was in the hospital and God healed me, so I know, I know I'm saying That healing had nothing to do. He healed lost people and they didn't even know who he was. It had nothing to do with salvation. Salvation is understanding you're lost. You need salvation. You need Jesus Christ as your Savior because your religion won't take you to heaven. Mom and dad won't. Your church won't. Nothing will outside of Jesus Christ. And when you put your faith and trust in him, yes, that overcomes that fear of going to hell. I've never feared going to hell anymore. I used to. But then that trust. Trust is made up, I think, of contentment and courage. Contentment and courage. Now, now that sounds a little abnormal, but let me just hold on a second, and I'll let you know when we get there. Contentment. Peace with my circumstances. I'm satisfied in whatever situation God has me in. Uh, not, that, not that I'm enjoying being ready to go to prison. Not that I'm enjoying hearing that, that I've got cancer or I've, I've got leukemia or I've got what. That's not, that's not the joy. But the joy is knowing and having that, that understanding that he is my God and that he will strengthen me. He will help me. He has a hold of my right hand and he's going to lead me through this thing. And that knot, it's there. But boy, God begins to dissipate that and say, God, I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to trust you. In all of it. 
Philippians chapter two give, or chapter four gives us an understanding of this. He said in verse eleven, "Not that I speak in respect of want, for I've learned. Notice this is something that's learned. You can teach it. I have learned in whatsoever state, whatsoever situation, whatsoever condition that I'm in." Therewith to be content. He was content in knowing that he was totally in God's hands. The, Paul was in fear in 1 Corinthians. He said, I thought I was going to die. I thought we were all going to die. We were ready to die. We just given that up. We're going to die. And it's in God's hands. But he said, but I know something. And that God got him through that. He said in verse 12, I know both how to be abased, how to be put on the bottom, how to be knocked down, how to be maligned, how to be, be thrust in the, the, the bottom of the rung. You lost your job, you lost your finances, you lost your health, whatever it might be. I know how to be abased. And I know how to abound. Hey, we're doing pretty good right now, amen? Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full. God says there's time. Isn't nothing wrong being rich. Nothing wrong being full. I like being full. But he says also, and to be hungry. What's that mean? That means you're not always going to have everything. And you're still in God's will. And God is still blessing you when you're hungry. We always say, well, yeah, things are going great. God's blessing. No, when you have nothing, God's blessing. And you can be content. Oh, you, if you can get out of that and you can get something else to eat, that's wonderful. But God, I know that you're working in this thing and you're in charge. And I'm just going to trust you in that. He says, I, there's both ends of the stick and God is still God and God is still in control and God is still blessing in both of them. He said, and both to abound and to suffer need. There's going to be times in our lives when we have need, we have problems. But God's still God, and God still wants to help. The best times, I think, in my life have been when we had nothing and when we could do nothing and when we had problems because we came closer to God in those times, and it brought us closer together. And then as God did continue to bless and we come out of those situations you can look back and say oh how wonderful my God is look at what he did see Paul's secret was his hope in Christ his hope in Christ there's so much that I could I could bring this evening Joshua said in Joshua 1 9 have not I commanded thee be strong and of good, a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be dismayed. Why? He says, for the Lord thy God is with thee. How could Joshua do what he did? Same way you and I do. You've got to acknowledge, you've got to get a hold of this fact that God is with you. He's got you by that right hand. He's your God no matter where you go. In Hebrews 11, 1, he says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. See, faith is what we believe. But the substance, that's what I base my faith on. That's the foundation. That's that it means to set under. Okay? But the evidence here. He said the substance of things hoped for, the evidence, the proof, that manifestation, what, what shows forth our conviction or what we actually believe, he said that's what's hoped for. The promise of God 
that we're believing in. I do what I do because of who he is, of what I believe about him. Okay? If I believe he's telling me the truth that all men are going to hell, I'm going to witness for him. Why? Because that's what he told me to do. If I don't, I'm not going to tell them. Hell's not really real. If I tell them, they may go to heaven, they may not. Not going to judge me if I tell them or not. You see, what we do is the evidence of what we actually believe. That's why I'm a Missouri Christian. Show me. I want to see it. We prove by our actions what we believe in our heart. Paul did what he did because his hope was in Jesus Christ and what he knew about Jesus Christ and the world was going to hell without Christ and God said, tell all the world. In our homes, we run our homes the way we would if Jesus Christ was there. Why? Because that's the proof of what we actually believe. I don't go certain places. I don't do certain things. Why? Because that's the proof. I don't go there because I'm not supposed to. Why? He's got me by that right hand. And he's leading me in righteousness. And I need to bypass that place. I need to get away from those people. Relatives included. We very seldom visited some of my relatives. Why? Because they couldn't say two sentences without, without taking God's name in vain. I don't want my kids being around that. It's more important that my kids are raised right than I have this relationship with some of my family members. And I love them. And I pray every day that they'll get saved. But the proof why would my mouth be filthy when I say I believe that he is Jehovah God? See, it's, it's, it's opposite. That's like saying with all these lights on that's, that they're all off. See, the proof is right there. The proof is our life, how we walk, how we conduct ourselves day by day by day. We have this thing coming up called the, the, the Blitz, I think it is. Or, and, and look, that's an opportunity. That's not a have to. That's an opportunity to go out and, and just get the gospel out. You don't, might not say anything, but just hanging door knockers or, or whatever. You know, getting the gospel out, giving people an opportunity. That's God's hand of righteousness. Where is he going to lead you? You can barbecue later. And I plan to. <laughs> Faith is that substance. I've got two minutes and three more pages of notes. We believe in the resurrection. So we live our life different than others who have no hope. I expect lost people to act like lost people. I do. I expect them to talk like lost people. I expect them to try to cheat in business and things like this. I, I just, they're lost people. That's the way they're supposed to act. But I also expect Christians to walk like Christians and act like Christians. Listen. This verse, I, I hope, I, I, I I'm serious. I, this verse has been so powerful in, in, in my life these last few days that I, I'm almost ready to change my life verse. And I've had my life verse ever since I got saved. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it's a power of God and of salvation 
to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. And I've lived by that all through my Christian life. But I'm seriously thinking about changing my life verse to this. It is so powerful. If you'll get a hold of this, young people, no, memorize this. Don't just memorize it, but make it a part of your heart and your life. Listen to it and we'll close. Fear thou not. Don't have to worry about COVID. Don't have to worry about the health. Don't have to worry about finances. All the different things. Fear thou not. Why? For I am with thee. The very presence of God. Be not dismayed. Don't get discouraged and down in the mouth. He says, for I am thy God. What a privilege, Betty. What, what a joy. The very God that created all this. He said, I'm thy God. He's mine. I don't know why. I'm, I'm nothing but a piece of dirt. Ready to go back to the dirt. But he said, I'm thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. The guidance everywhere, every day. Where's your hope? And where's the proof of your hope? Father, Lord, we thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you for how powerful it is and your Holy Spirit then convicts our hearts. Lord, I do pray that you would strengthen us, that you would help us. Lord, that we might understand and recognize that you are our God. And that you call the shots in our life. You give us the direction. And Lord, just like little young baby children, you take our right hand and you will lead us in righteousness. Father, have your way in every heart, both on live stream and in this auditorium tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Brother Stensis, we uh, have several prayer requests that came in tonight, and we're going to take a moment and uh, give an update on these prayer requests that have come in.